All right. So, in this example, again, what we need to do is identify. We know that to take the derivative, uh, to find g prime of x, that's going to be 1 over f prime of g of x. Right? So we know automatically, there's a couple things we guys could do. Automatically, we need to know what the derivative is. We're given a function, so we need to definitely figure out what f prime of x is. So we can just do that without understanding much of anything else of the problem. Right? So simply take the derivative. Um, but we also need to understand how x and y. So we know we have g, um, g prime of 1, but remember, or that's what we're trying to figure out. But remember, g of x equals f inverse of f of x. So therefore, that's your output. We need to figure out what the input is. So basically, we're given the output, but we don't know what the input is. Well, if I give you, if I replace 1 with f of x as the output, x plus cosine of x, what value could I plug in for x that's going to give me 1? And if you plug in 0, um, cosine of 0 is just going to be 0. Cosine of the angle 0 is going to be, cosine will be 1 plus, I'm sorry, 0 plus 1, which equals 1. So therefore, by plugging in 0 is my input of f of x. And g of x then is 1 comma 0, right? The f of x and g of x's are swapped. Does that make sense? Yes. Unit circle, plugging in 0, you get cosine of 1, so forth. So now, if I using this information, if I want to find g prime of 1, 1 over f prime of g of 1. Well, <laughs> g of 1 gives me, when I plug in 1 into my g of x function, g of 1, I end up getting 0. And then what happens when I plug in 0 into my uh, f inverse function? Sine of 0 is? Zero. Here's here's your zero. What's the sign of that point? Zero. Zero. One minus zero is. Zero. 